Welcome to this 11 plus non-verbal reasoning masterclass. Today we are going through shape codes, which is an extremely common question type that you will face when you open your exam paper on exam day. So you need to know how to approach this question effectively and efficiently. So here's my promise. If you watch this video all the way through to the end and you follow the formulas that we're going to go through, then you will never ever get this question wrong ever again. So if that sounds good, let's get straight into this teaching. Okay, so when it comes to solving shape codes in 11 plus nonverbal reasoning, the formula you need to be using every single time is to look for repeats. Solving this question completely revolves around finding repeated letters. Do this every single time and you will not get this question wrong. So to show this, let's take a look at this example down here. We have three shapes, three figures, and we have some codes, some letters that describe these figures, describe these shapes. So the first thing to note is that these codes work in rows, not in columns. So we have C, X and C describing one characteristic among these figures. And then we have F, F and B describing another characteristic. Now, when it comes to actually working it out, we need to use our formula. We look for repeats. So if we start at the top row, we have two repeated letters. We see we have C and we have another C. So these are our repeats, these are our repeated letters. The next thing we do is we think, okay, if these are repeated letters, what characteristic is shared amongst the two figures where we have repeated letters? If we look closely, we have a blue triangle and we have a blue square. So we can see what's repeated is the outline color, the color of the outline. We have blue outline for the triangle and we also have a blue outline for the square. So now we can use that repeat to infer what the top row must represent. The top row must represent the color of the shape or the color of the outline. So let's note that down. Top row must be color. And we can also confirm this because we can look at the third shape that we did not cover. And this third shape, we have an X. And just as the letter is different, it's not a repeat, we can also see the color. The outline color is different. It's red and not blue. So now we know top row is color. Cool. Let's move on to the bottom row. Again, same formula. We look for repeats. What's the repeat this time? Well, now we have two Fs. We have an F here and we have an F here. And then we have a B. So let's look at our repeats, F and F. Again, we ask ourselves the same question. What characteristics of these two shapes? What features are shared amongst these two shapes? Well, this time we see what's shared is the type of shape. In this first one, we have a blue triangle. In our second one, our middle shape, we have a red triangle. But in both cases, we have triangles. So we can now see that this repeat reveals to us that the bottom row of codes describes type of shape. So top row color, bottom row type. And again, we can confirm this because what happens for our third shape over here? We have a B and just as the letter is different, the type of shape is also different. So we have a square instead of triangles. And now you can see how this helps us if we introduce a fourth figure. What letters, what codes will describe this figure? Well, we simply use what we've already worked out. We know the top row of letters describes the color of the figure. We don't want blue, which would be C, we want red, which we know is X. Therefore, the top letter should be X. That's simple. Same thing with the bottom row. 
Well, we know the bottom row of codes, the bottom row of letters describes the type of shape. This time we don't want F because we know F describes a triangle. We want a square and we know a square is B. And therefore our bottom letter is going to be B. So this red square is described with X on the top and B on the bottom. We use our formula, look for repeats. Now there's one more layer that we need to understand. And if we can understand this layer, then we can never get caught out by the examiner. And this layer is this. Yes, we know that for this question type, we look for repeats, but there aren't only clues in repeats. There are also clues being sent to us by the examiner when we have a lack of repeats. So the same way repeats tell us something, lack of repeats also tell us something. So to understand this, let's look at this question here. Again, we have four figures, but this time we see for our top row of letters, our top row of codes, we have no repeats. What do we do? Is something going wrong? No. Well, let's start at the bottom row. Bottom row, we see we have repeats. We have C, C, ML. I repeat a C. We'll come back to the top row in a second. We know that for the bottom row, these repeats should tell us something that's shared between these two figures. We can see what's shared is the fact that both of these figures have a blue outline and therefore the bottom row represents color. And then we can also confirm this because we have M and L for our last two figures. M is a different color being black. L is again a different color being red. So we can be pretty confident that the bottom row of letters represents the color scheme. But let's go back to this top row of letters where we have no repeats. Well here, the lack of repeats is still telling us something because if we have a lack of repeats, that simply means we should be expecting something different for each and every figure. There should be a certain characteristic of each and every single figure that is different and that will justify the lack of repeats. So now what do we do? We simply look at these four figures and we think to ourselves, what is different? And this time what we can see is that the type of shape is different. For our first shape, we have a trapezium. For our second shape, we have a triangle. For our third shape, we have a rectangle. And for our fourth shape, we have a rhombus. So we can see the type of shape is different every single figure. So now we know the top row of codes must represent type of shape. So this is really important to understand. Our formula is always going to primarily be look for repeats. But if you don't see repeats, it's not the end of the world. The examiner is still trying to send you a message. He's still trying to give you clues. Lack of repeats simply means look for something different every single figure. So now let's use these formulas. Let's use these techniques and answer some questions. Okay, so here is exactly the type of question that you can expect to find when you open your exam paper. We're told each shape on the left has code letters that describe that shape. We know this. Work out which code letters correctly describe the shape on the right. So straight into our formula, we look for repeats. We waste no time. Let's start at the top row. For the top row, we have T, Y, Y and R. We can quickly see our repeat is going to be which letter? Y. So now let's look for some similarities between the two figures that we have in these two boxes. And we can quickly see the similarity is to do with the color scheme within this mini triangle. We can see that for both of these squares, both of these figures, the color scheme works in a way that the black is on the right side of the triangle and the white is on the left side of the triangle. We can also see it's different for T and R. For T, we have the black section on the left and the white section on the right. And for R, we have a white section on the left 
and a gray section this time on the right. So clearly we can see the top row of codes represents the color scheme within the mini triangle. So now we go to our answer. What do we want? Well, we can see what we want is we want the black section on the left and we want the white section on the right. So we want to copy T. We want to copy what we see in this square over here. And therefore we know our top row letter, our top row code should be T. Now we use the process of elimination to cancel out C, D, and E. For each of these answers, the top row, the top code is incorrect. For our bottom row, we see we have two sets of repeats. We have repeats with S and S, and then we also have repeats with B and B. What's shared? Well, for S and S, we see what's shared is the color scheme of the bigger figure over here. We see for S, we have the gray section on the right and the white section on the left. But for B, we have the gray section on the left and the white section on the right. So back to our answer, what do we want? We know this repeat represents the color scheme of this bottom section, but we want to emulate the gray section on the right and the white section on the left. And this is through the letter S and therefore our answer should be T S. Or in other words, our answer is A. Okay, so now we should be getting it. We're seeing how looking for repeats simplifies the entire question. But let's try it on this new question. Here we have X, Y, Z, X for our top row. Straight away our repeats are X and X. We can see what shared between these two figures is the type of shape. We have two triangles. So therefore the top row should represent type of shape. We can confirm this because for Y, we have a rhombus and for Z, we have one, two, three, four, five sides, a pentagon. Therefore top row is type of shape. Now we go to our answer. What type of shape do we want? We want a rhombus. We want what's shown over here. And therefore, the letter we want, the code we want, is simply going to be Y. And therefore, we can cancel out answers B and D, process of elimination. Now, for our bottom row of codes, we have B, B, C, R. Straight away, we found our repeats, B and B. What's shared here, as we can see, is going to be the color scheme. The color scheme is the same. We have two white shapes. And then we can confirm the bottom row has to be color scheme because for our other two figures on the right, we have black and gray represented by C and R, two different letters. So great, our bottom row represents color scheme. Back to our answer. What do we want? We want black and therefore we want what we see over here. This code is going to be C and therefore our answer should be Y, C. A and C are wrong, and our answer is going to be E. Okay, awesome, we are now understanding how this works. So let's approach this question. Here we see something different. Like we talked about at the start, we don't have two letters describing the figures, but this time we have three letters describing the figures. But don't worry, the formula we use stays the exact same. And if we use it correctly, three letters, four letters, five letters does not matter. The answer will pop out every single time. So let's apply our formula, looking for repeats. This time we're going to work in terms of columns, not rows. So for our first column, we have P, P, Y. Well, we see our repeat, our repeated letter is going to be P. So therefore we want to look at these first two figures, one and two. And we want to ask ourselves, what is shared between these first two figures that we don't find for our third figure? Well, if we look closely, it all comes down to the corners. We see that for the first two figures, if we look at the rectangle with a thick black line, the corners 
of the rectangle are sharp. They're sharp corners. However, for our third figure, the corners are not sharp corners, they're rounded corners. And therefore, this must mean that the first column of letters must represent whether the corners of the rectangle are sharp corners or rounded corners. So now we go to our answer. What do we want? We always go back and forth. What do we know from the repeat? And what do we want? Well, we want rounded corners. And therefore, we don't want the letter P. We want the letter Y. Our first letter should be Y. Same process. We're going to use the process of elimination to cancel out C and D. And we're left with A, B and D. So now let's move on to the second column. Now we have S, G and G. What are our repeats? Well, our repeated letter is going to be G. And this time we're going to look for similarities between the bottom two figures. So this one here and this one here. What do these two figures share that this third figure at the top does not have? Well, if you look closely, it's going to be the number of circles within the rectangle. We see that for the bottom two figures, we have three circles. But for the top figure, how many circles do we have? We only have one. Therefore, the second column must represent number of circles within the rectangle. So now we go back to our answer. What do we want? How many circles do we want? Well, we can see that we only want one circle. And therefore, our letter shouldn't be G. It should be S. So we can cancel out answer B. Okay, so finally, we're going to move on to our third column. But we may notice that this time it's a bit different. We have no repeats. D is different to R, which is different to O. What do we do? Well, we know exactly what to do because we've gone through it. We know the examiner is still sending us clues through the lack of repeats. If we have no repeats, then that means we're expecting a characteristic to be expressed differently between the three figures. We want to find something different between figure one, figure two, and figure three. So if we look very closely, we can see that what's different between the three figures is the color scheme of the circle. For figure one, we have a white circle. For figure two, we have a black circle. For figure three, we have what color? A gray circle. This is different for every single figure, the color scheme of the circle. So now we know the third column must represent the color scheme of the circle. So now what do we want? We want a black circle. Therefore, we want what's shown over here. The letter we want is R. So our answer should be Y, S, R. D is incorrect and our answer is A. So you can see no matter whether it's two letters, three letters, four, five letters, does not matter. Once you know the formula, the question becomes easy to answer and you can get it right every single time. So that's the end of this 11 plus nonverbal reasoning masterclass. And make sure that whenever you're faced with the shape codes question type, you use your special formula. Look for repeats.